Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do an overview on the Cyber Tricks. So this is actually a knife. Uh, it's in a Reich knife box and pouch. Um, I bought this off of LTK, right? So I got this off of Love Them Knives. He bought it at Blade Show Atlanta this year. Uh, I actually almost bought, I guess, this exact knife off the table there. But I was tapped out, so I didn't buy it. Um, there's a sticker. Looks like there's a Reich um, cloth. There's a QR code. And then, of course, Lee threw in one of his stickers. Shout out to him. Um, he had this knife from Blade Show, reviewed it, whatever. And I guess he was going to move it on. I reached out and I said, hey. Because uh, somebody actually told me to hit him up about it. Um, so I hit him up. And I was like, hey, would you sell that Cyber Tricks? He's like, yeah. So I bought it off of him. Um, I paid three fifty, and here she is. Uh, and I believe I've already um, traded it. <laughs> so believe it or not, I think I traded it for a fidget toy. Um, that sounds super weird, but I have this in purple haze fat carbon. And there's sort of a brother that goes to it, and it's like a little pad that has four buttons, kind of like your PlayStation controller, right? So this is your D-pad, then you have the buttons. Um, and I have a friend who has a matching one in purple fat carbon, and um, they're worth quite a bit, uh, at least what I paid for that. So it's going to be basically coming out even, and he thought uh, the cyber tricks was cool. And I was like, you know, I wasn't going to keep it long term anyway. So that's why I'm not going to be doing like a full review. Um, I've, you know, I got this knife today actually, and I'm just going to do an overview and probably get it packed up and shipped out soon. So, uh, sorry if anybody was looking for my long term thoughts on this knife. I do actually like it. Uh, the longer I've had it, again, a few hours here. The longer I've had it, the more I actually uh, really like this knife. And I think if I could find the other blade shape, I would totally get another one and maybe keep it. Um, that is how much I actually do kind of like it. There are some things I don't like about it. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. Just keep in mind, very limited use on this. Um, I've cut some paper, I cut, uh, some shipping label, like I, you know, mocked up, like I was cutting pieces of stuff out of paper and it did, uh, really well at that actually, but, uh, we'll get into that. So let's take a look at it. This is the Cyber Tricks. It's designed by King Freeman, I believe, AKA Declan X. Um, pardon me if I get any of that wrong. I believe he's a European designer, but I'm not positive. And uh, this was modeled after the Cyber Truck. So you could call this the Elon Musk knife if you want. And uh, we don't know who the OEM is. I I'm a little confused by that. I feel like it's Reich <laughs> because it came in their package. But if you got this directly from the website, uh, it was fsedc.com, I believe. fsedc.com. Um, it came in a aluminum box that you had to use, you know, you just unscrew and then the knife was in there. And people think that's funny because they say this knife has uh, no hardware and they're wrong. There is hardware on this knife. It's just hidden. So that's how it came if you got it from them or I think you can get it on AliExpress right now and it comes that way. But if you got it from Reich, it came in just a normal box in a pouch like I just showed you. I'm not sure if the other ones don't have this lettering, but I'm pretty sure they do. So it's M390 Cybertrix. FS, I think, stands for um, that website I was telling you about, FSEDC, which on the inside it says Forever Steel. So I'm pretty sure that's what FS means. So I don't know if that somehow is an OEM or something. Um, and then it says number six, A is the blade shape, and then it's number 85. Uh, there's an A and a B blade shape. So this is blade shape A, and blade shape B is more of a straight line up and then a sheep's foot. So, like, imagine this Tanto is gone. Imagine it not being so thick. It's kind of like you go from here, and instead of hitting this Tanto, this line just goes up right to here to the tip. Like, it kind of goes... 
It's a more traditional looking blade shape to me. It looks just better. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I'm not sure, but so LTK was saying in his video that Reich is not the OEM. They just did the blade finish, which it looks like just a stone wash or a bead blast. So I don't know why they would just have done that. Seems a little bit weird to me. I kind of think they made the knife, but you know, um, you can obviously think whatever you want. And if anybody knows, please let us know down in the comments. You have titanium and M390. You have an inset steel liner lock. It's not titanium, it's steel. Uh, you have this super long clip and then you have this backspacer and this does come apart with tools, but there's no showing hardware. That's what people are getting wrong. It's not um, no hardware, it's hidden hardware. So what you do is you pop the backspacer off. It's actually really cool. Um, you just pop this off. You can just push something in there and it'll pop this up and off. And then the backspacer literally just comes out. And then the uh, scales will actually like fan out, kind of like a ballast song. They'll kind of fan out. And then there's uh, T8 hardware under there, and you actually unscrew it from the inside, and then these scales will fall off. So these are basically onlays. Um, it's very unique. If you go watch LTK's video, he literally disassembles it, this knife. So there's no reason for me to do it right now. Um, but that's kind of how it works. Uh, there is obviously a pivot under there. You can see it's centered. And I will say it is free-floating bearings. Uh, so they have little discs, and the bearings are free in there. So be careful if you take this knife apart. Now, there's not many of these, and I think they're really hard to get because it took me a little bit to get one, and I had to settle for this blade shape. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a cool knife. So let's talk about it. Aesthetically... I like it. I love the just crazy colorway. It's got that really geometric thing going on. It's got the Cybertruck thing going on. And this is going to be 100% polarizing. There's going to be a bunch of you that are like, yeah, yeah, that looks sexy. And there's going to be a bunch of you that are like, yeah, it's fugly as shit, right? It's just how it's going to be. Um, and if you don't like it, great. If you do like it, cool, you know? Um, I do think it has a arc form slim foot kind of thing going on. It looks a lot like a tough knife slim foot design um, or a reset, something like that, that Jeff has designed. But um, it's definitely also different. I mean, it's got the cyber truck stuff going on. It looks a lot like a boat I've seen before. I think there was a movie with a boat. Um, oh, man, it was a long time ago, but it was like this crazy metallic really geometric looking boat um and it reminds me of that a little bit uh, i think the colorway is pretty cool you have that that kind of shiny titanium every corner you can see how it's like hand polished or something it looks really cool um, and then it kind of contrasts with the bead blasting everywhere and the blade is just kind of one stone wash finish i guess um I think it looks unique and it looks cool and uh, the all the freaking sharp geometric corners are kind of cool. It kind of reminds me of a Chavez in a way. This one's a bad example because it's a um, warning, I guess. Well, not really, I guess. If you look at it, it's very square, very sharp, edgy, kind of, you know, that kind of deal. Um, so here's some size comparisons for you. You have the Chavez Sangre. This is the street, so it's going to be three and a quarter inch blade, I think. So this is not a massive knife by any means. Um, it's a decent size knife, but it's not huge in any way. Uh, one knife I carried today that is also very futuristic, I think is a good uh, comparison, is the Winter Blade Factor right here. So you can see it's a good bit bigger than the Factor. Um, I have in right now the Mr. Mr. Designs Ronin, which I think is a interesting comparison just because they're both sort of very out there kind of looking designs. Um, this was a knife that I originally didn't, you know, I wasn't blown away by the design, just not for me personally, which is fine, right? Uh, but getting the prototype in hand, dude, I really like this knife. I immediately backed it, so that means anything to you uh i don't know if there's anything else you guys want to look at the 
I guess Jaeger would be a good comparison. The Jaeger M for Brian Brown Knives. Really, really good comparison there. It's a little bit bigger than that. You're probably looking at a three and a half inch blade on this guy, would be my guess. Let's see if we take the Sharp by Design Mini Tempest blade. It's hard to compare because you don't know where the pivot is, but if we line them up where the scales kind of start, yeah, you're looking at about a three and a half inch blade. So anyway, ergonomics, uh, surprisingly good. Uh, I am very surprised. Now it's a little bit scary because if you slide it all on this, you're going right into that edge, but it doesn't really worry me all that much. Um, the one thing I will say ergonomically is this back here is a very sharp corner. I mean, this thing, you could probably cut stuff with this corner back here. It's really sharp. And when I hold the knife, I get that corner right into my palm, and it very much annoys the crap out of me. So if this were my knife, I would probably take sandpaper and try to knock that corner down a little bit. I don't know if it would do anything, but I would have to try because it really just is uncomfortable. Um, pinch grip is pretty good. You have that secondary tip. We'll talk about that in cutting. It's, it's pretty much useless. Uh, but, you know, your standard grip is pretty comfortable. Uh, other than that corner, you can get into a reverse grip. If you come out of 7-Eleven and 2077 and you need to, you know, cyberpunk somebody, uh, you got a pretty good grip there. Uh, all these things feel good. I don't know why you'd be doing it with this knife, but hey, um, you know, you can reverse draw cut. You can do whatever you want. Um, it's, it's very neutral. It just has that sharp corner that kind of kills it a little bit, but other than that, it actually feels pretty good in hand. I, I enjoy it. Um, the carry. So this clip is obnoxiously long. Um, it doesn't work too bad. Like it's fine. It just takes a little bit. It's not like super stiff or anything. It just has shitty ramp. Um, now in hand, it's good cause you don't feel it at all. Right. It, cause it's barely there. But, you know, it's a little bit of a task getting it in pocket. I did not enjoy the one time I tried putting it in my back pocket because I had to, you know, like reach and almost look back there to try to get it. My front pocket, I got it in pretty quick. And you just have to keep, it's almost like uh, the never ending whatever. Like it just, you have to keep pushing it to get it in your pocket. Like if I try to show you, it's a paper towel, which is a terrible idea. But um, once you get it over material yeah that was a really bad idea um let's try a hank Jeez. serious you're not making a good case for yourself here bud how did i get this in my pocket earlier all right there so once you get it going it's kind of like all right is it in is it in is it in? Is it in my pocket? Is it in my pocket yet? Uh, oh, okay. Now it's in my pocket. <laughs> it's like, what in God's name? Why is this clip so damn long? But I don't know if it has something to do with the Cybertruck. I don't know. It works once you get it going, right? Is basically my point. Um, it's heavy. It's not, I mean, it's not like super heavy, but it's light. Uh, that made no sense. It's not super heavy, but... It's not, like, light either is what I'm trying to say. It, it's, like, let me start over. It's got some weight to it, right? Uh, there's not a ton of milling inside. I mean, you can see a little bit, but the way they had to mount these scales, it just, they couldn't mill out a ton of it. Um, so you feel the weight. But it's also not, like, a brick, if that makes sense. It's probably, like, five or six ounces. You know, it's not crazy but it's definitely not like good. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Cause, um, I'm not going to try to say that again. <laughs> um, cutting. So on the cutting guys, again, had this a few hours, grain of salt here, but I did cut some paper and it, the factory edge is sharp enough to cut paper real easily. Slice, slice, slice. No problem. Right. Uh, now I went to do some label cutting testing sort of stuff. So I'm doing this and you can get to that tip pretty easily. But the reason why I prefer the other blade shape is twofold. One, I just think this looks really fat and like weird. And then it like thins out. I don't know. It's just goofy to me. Uh, but two, 
I would prefer the one that's kind of like, kind of goes up, 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 and it's just got like a sheep's foot tip, so I can just go boom right into the tip, right? With this, I got to worry about all this down here, because like this, when you go to use this tip, you end up almost putting this one on the ground or on the table or whatever it is, right? Um, so it's just not the best. You kind of have to get up here a little bit to use it. and But once you do, the tip works really well. I mean, it, it's not dainty. It's also not, like, super thick. It's a, it's a good tip, in my opinion. It is a flat grind, and the grind starts right here. It doesn't come down to a like, super thin edge. It's mediocre at best. But it'll get the job done. And, guys, look at this knife. Who's buying this knife for hard use? No one. Okay, so let's not have that conversation. But, um, so yeah, um, it works. And then I did try the secondary tip, and it does work for the same kind of thing, label cutting stuff. But it's a little awkward because it's a very minute tip, and you're kind of like, you might as well just climb up here and use that tip, right? Uh, you're basically using belly, but it does work a little better than that. So that's cutting you know, nothing revolutionary. And again, you're not buying this knife for hard use. Um, sounds. So the sounds are, you know, what you'd probably expect from a liner lock sort of knife with full titanium scales and backspacer, not a lot of open areas or milling. It's very dull. You know, you don't get a lot of sounds, which is unfortunate because it would be cool um, to have some some awesome sounds going on, right? All right, so action and fidget factor. This is where this knife kind of does shine a little bit. Um, you have these sort of thumb disky things, uh, goes along with the design really well, and they catch your finger really good. Um, it reverse flicks really well, in my opinion. Once you get used to just catching the bottom of that thing, like you try to catch it like right there, it really works extremely well. Um, I've had no issue. Thumb flick, same thing. You just catch it at the bottom and flick, right? Um, Right-handed, no problem. Left-handed, no problem. It just works either way. The detent, it, it kind of feels like it'd be soft, right? But it's got some snap to it. I mean, it's not like just shaking out. I could get it to shake out probably if I tried hard enough. But it's good. Uh, it's really not bad at all. I think the detent's set pretty well. I think it just feels lighter because of the sounds. Like It just doesn't sound snappy. So you're like, is that detent weak? But... Uh, it feels good when you're flicking it. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, lockup's good. It's a steel liner lock, which I think was a smart move here. Now, they had to kind of do it because they were using these liners that are, you know, holding on the scale and everything. It wasn't like they could just put a nested liner in one single liner. Um, so they, I don't, I guess they didn't have to use steel, but it made the most sense for me, uh, I think it made the most sense and it works really well. You have no stick at all. Now there is a slight bit of rock. Um, I have tested the spine whack a little bit and no issues. It's not coming, you know, it's not slipping or anything. It's just a little bit. Um, and I don't know if that's because of this angle. It looks really, you know, I don't know. It just looks like it drops off more than most knives. If you look at, you know, almost any other knife, and you look at that angle, it just doesn't look as crazy as it does on this. See that? It just seems a lot steeper. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'm crazy. Let's check another one. Yeah, I don't know. It just looks a little more aggressive, that drop on the tang there. But I don't know. Could be nothing. Um, and then on the clothes, it, it has... I like the way they did the lock bar. See, they tried to keep it very geometric, sort of straight line, right? They couldn't really do a chamfer like you would normally see because that would kind of be different than the rest of the design. So they kept it very angular like that, but they they brought the lock bar out just a touch. 
and they made it kind of fat and it just works really well i mean it just catches your finger and because it's a steel liner lock and because of the length of the liner it doesn't feel stiff at all it just glides out of the way and then you can see here it swings down and very smooth shakes down uh, and i mean look at that that action's really good now i don't know if it's loosening at all Got to check. This was obviously taken apart by Lee. Eh, it still feels really solid. I mean, maybe the slightest hint of uh, side to side, but I mean, that's just me wrenching on it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it drops really well. The action's really good, guys. I really like this knife. So, I think in closing, I'll say this knife is really cool. Uh, I'm glad I got my hands on it. I saw somebody comment the other day on my live stream. They were like, why is everybody talking about this knife now? Like they're discovering it. it's been out for, you know, 11 months or 17 months. It's like, I don't, I don't know, dude. I just found out about it. Like I saw pictures of it a few months ago and then, you know, um, I saw them at Blade Show and I got to handle it. And yeah, they've been out, but like they haven't been around. There's just not that many of them, I guess. And maybe most of them are overseas or something. So I don't know what to tell you there, but um, to me it's new and it's cool and it's interesting. Um, I will say I don't love the fact that this backspacer is what's holding everything together, basically. If that comes out, then the scales can move around and stuff and you can definitely flex this a little bit like can you hear that that's me moving stuff around because the only thing holding it in place is this backspacer that clicks down and around everything and it works well it's just you know if you squeeze in the right place you can kind of feel things moving a little bit um but i think it's super unique i think it's an interesting design i think it's i think it's executed extremely well for the price point i mean 375 400 for this is impressive china or not uh, if you look at the engineering that goes into this having to pop that out and then having all the screws hold the scales on the way the pivots done and the lock bar and the the crazy blade shape and the thumb discs and just all of it inset liner lock um i gotta give them props i mean i think that's a really good affordable price for something like this um and the fact that we're doing and there's no detent lash by the way um the fact that we're doing stuff like this now it's just like cool and concept type stuff is awesome to me right it kind of like that new avian knives atlas that thing looks awesome freaking awesome that one's actually no tools at all no hardware um the fact that that kind of stuff is coming out of the knife community now is cool it's just different you know uh add in the the winter blade co factor and the and the brown knives fsd and and just the cool stuff that's happening i mean you could even include uh, like i said mr mr and the and the ronin here is an integral made by Riot, and the price is three sixty five on Kickstarter. I mean, that's impressive to me. Uh, you know, uh, we need to get this guy funded. So, if you're interested, pick one up because if he doesn't get it funded, it don't happen. Uh, so yeah, that's the Cyber Tricks, and uh, I'm glad I finally got my hands on one, and I do actually want one. So I think if I could find a type B, if anybody out there has a B blade shape and would like to move it along for obviously a decent price, hit me up. Uh, I think I want to pick one up and, and get a type B in the collection because this one's gone now. Um, I kind of regret it a little bit. I wish I had waited till I got it and then decided to make the trade and, and the dude would you know, he wouldn't mind if I changed my mind, but I'm just not that kind of person. And, um, I also really want the other blade shape. So it would bug me anyway until I got that blade shape. So, uh, that is the cyber trick. So shout out to King Freeman, 
or Declan X. You did a great job on this design. I'm very much impressed. I uh, can't wait to see what kind of stuff you come out with next. I'm going to jump on it next time. Um, I remember seeing them available and everything when they came out a few months ago. And I just, I don't know. I wasn't sure, you know, $400 to some random website. But now I'm like, I wish I had just got one. Um, you know, the one I wanted. So, anyway, I love you guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And uh, I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.